Hello and welcome to part two of the Zoom FT-BT video. Uh, today we're not actually looking at the product itself. I did that in a previous video. I'll throw the link up here so you can go and have a look at that if you want to see my review of this device, the Zoom F2BT little field recorder device. Um, I'm not actually going to review the product today, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to talk about the technology behind this product. So this device uses what's called 32-bit audio. So today I'm going to look at what that is and why it's so important. We are going to deep dive into the science behind 32-bit technology and understand what it is and how it works. So if that sounds good, why don't you give this video a thumbs up and consider subscribing to the channel as well. And remember to hit that little bell icon so you get notified when all the new videos turn up. I do weekly videos and here we talk about church tech and all things church tech related, audio, video, lighting, whatever you might be doing in a church tech context. This is the place for that and we're gonna be putting those out weekly. So if you wanna to listen to more of that type of content, subscribe to the channel, hit the bell icon and you'll be notified whenever they come out. So the first thing to understand here is that 32-bit audio is advertised as being unclippable audio. Now, what does that mean? What is clipped audio? Well, in order to understand this, I've got a recording here. Um, I recorded this actually on this device and we can see at a glance that this audio is clipped. Clipped audio is when that audio hits a peak limit. It cannot go any further than this. And we can see this in this waveform because the tops and bottoms of this waveform are squared off. And that's what happens when the audio hits its top limit, it's got nowhere else to go. Um, and all the computer can do or all the software can do or whatever it is that you're using, all it can do is just square that off as the maximum level and say it can't go any further than this, that is the limit. And the way that we hear that is we hear a distorted sound, a distorted audio. And I'll play you an example in a minute of what that does sound like so you can hear that clipped audio, that distorted audio, and that is generally what clipping is always going to sound like. So we'll listen to that now. So let me play you some of this clip so you can hear what that sounds like and uh, what distorted clipping audio will sound like. Okay, this looks like it could be a reasonable test. One, two, testing this microphone. I'm talking into this microphone and it's going to the very top of this indicator here, input indicator. This is showing as clip on my level indicator right here. So there we go, that is the clipped audio. As you heard, that is very distorted. It sounds really horrible. Clipped audio isn't a nice thing to listen to at all. It's something you want to avoid at all costs. So that's what it is. That's what it looks like on a computer. That's what the waveform actually looks like. So now we understand what clipping is and what clipped audio is, we can have a look at what the advantages of 32-bit audio are. So why is it that 32-bit audio is considered unclippable? Well, in order to understand that, we need to understand what a bit rate actually is when we're talking about audio. And to put bit rates in a very simple term, um, what we're looking at is a range of volume levels. What is the loudest sound and what is the quietest sound and how many possible variations of volume do we have between those two different sound levels? And that essentially is what our bit rate is going to allow us to do. The higher the bit rate, the more possible volume levels we have available to us. And adversely, the lower the bit rate, the less volume levels that we have available to us. Now, typically we would tend to use either 16-bit or 24-bit audio. 16-bit audio is perfect for speech and 24-bit audio we tend to use for music. The dynamic range of speech is typically lower than music even if we whisper or project our voices, the range between those two sounds is less than what we can produce with music or with a worship band who are playing instruments. Even singing actually will produce a greater range than speech. So 16-bit contains enough information for us to capture speech and 24-bit is better suited for music or anything with a greater dynamic range where we need to be able to capture that range of variations in volume levels, louder sounds, quieter sounds and everything in between. The higher the bit rate, the more we can capture of that information. So that begs the question then, why do we need 32-bit? 
If we've got 16-bit for speech and 24-bit for music, why would we need 32-bit? Well, the answer is fairly simple, really. Those extra volume levels that we capture enable us to restore that clipped and distorted audio that we saw previously. So this audio was recorded into this device, the Zoom F2BT. This was the device that I used to record this particular clip. However, it's worth pointing out at this stage that I had to take an external microphone, feed it through an additional preamp to boost the level before it went into this recorder in order for me to capture audio that was this distorted. I simply couldn't make it clip without doing that, but I'll come back onto that more in a little while. So if we go into this software here, I'm using Audacity, which is a 32-bit audio recording software package, and I can go and select this audio here and normalize it. Normalizing audio is when the software analyzes the audio and finds the highest points in the audio and changes the volume for all the audio levels to set the maximum level to a set standard. Now in this case, I'm gonna to normalize to minus one dB as that standard. That means that all the audio is gonna be dropped down so the highest points are gonna be at minus one dB, so everything is gonna be below the clipping level. So we can see exactly what is happening at those maximum levels here and we can see exactly what is going on. So let's just do that quickly. So here we go, normalizing to minus one dB, okay. The software has now calculated that, worked out what the maximum points are, dropped everything down to minus one dB, and now we can zoom in here and see exactly what is going on. Now, if I zoom in on, say, this section here, which looks to have some of the highest peaks in the whole of this recording, let's zoom in on here and we can see what's going on. Now, we can still see here that some of this audio is clipped. There are some bits of this audio that simply cannot be recovered. However much of this audio is now recovered, and it's vastly better than it was to begin with. So if I play this audio again, we can have a listen and we can listen to it now and see what it now sounds like. Let me just pull back out again and head back to the beginning here. So let's, let's play this again and see what it sounds like. Okay, this looks like it could be a reasonable test. One, two, testing this microphone. I'm talking into this microphone and it's going to the very top of this indicator here. There, so we can hear there that that is significantly better than it was. Far less distorted, far more usable audio there. And as I say, when we zoom in on this audio, we can see, yes, some of it is still squared off. There are one or two lines here that we can't get the tops back on, but it is clearly far better than it was previously. And this is where 32-bit audio really comes into its own. If we had been recording in 16-bit or 24-bit, all of that clipped audio, all of that information would have been gone, completely gone, no way to recover it. With a 32-bit recording, we have enough volume levels available or enough information available to be able to recover that data, pull that volume back down and recover some of that audio that was lost. And this is where the beauty of 32-bit audio really comes in. It's a really powerful tool that can have huge benefits. And if you're a creative person, someone who is making videos for your church, often you might be working on your own, trying to set up lighting, cameras, and audio, and trying to monitor all those things, it can sometimes be impossible to keep your eye on everything. But with something like this, you really don't need to worry about monitoring your audio levels. If the audio clips, you can pull it back later and fix it in post. So does that mean that 32-bit audio is the answer to all of our problems and if we record everything in 32-bit, from now on, we will never again need to worry about our audio? Well, no. Don't fire your audio engineers just yet. There is a bit more we need to understand. With any audio recording, there is always gonna be a chain of pieces of equipment, bits of equipment connected together to make the recording work. We'll need a microphone that will go through into a preamp, which from there goes through to our recorder, and that is where the audio will be recorded. And all of these points of this chain can be clipped. So microphone capsules can be clipped. When the microphone itself has too much audio hitting it, it can cause the microphone capsule to clip. 
The most common place we see this is if you try to record outside on a windy day. We have all heard that horrible distortion of wind noise on a microphone, and that wind noise is actually the mic capsule being physically overloaded by the pressure of the wind, the pressure of the air outside. And so that is a type of physical clipping that happens within a mic capsule. We can also clip our preamps. Anytime that little red light comes on on your mixing desk, that's exactly what is happening. The only part of this process we can restore is clipping in the recording. If any other part of our system is clipped, there is nothing we can do about it. 32-bit audio won't solve the wind noise issue or a clipping preamp. I mentioned previously that in order to make this audio clip, I had to use an external microphone fed through a preamp to make this audio loud enough for it to clip into the recorder. Under normal conditions that the device was designed for, which is basically a person talking into the mic that they provided with it, I couldn't make this clip at all. I tried shouting at it, talking as loud as I could, the volume levels never got high enough to hit clip even once. Now obviously for the purpose of making this video, I needed to make that volume clip so I could demonstrate how we can restore that audio. But if anyone were to use this device as it was intended, with its own microphone for recording speech, I don't think you would ever need to worry about it. And even if you do somehow manage to get the signal to clip when someone is talking, it would only just go into clip by such a small amount it would be easily recoverable. But personally, I would have 100% confidence that this device will never clip when I'm recording someone talking. I have to say that I was blown away by the amount of audio I was able to recover in this software given the setup that I was using, the external mic into the preamp, boosting that signal to record it down, it was going heavily into clip on that recording. I could see the levels were going right up to the top. I knew that it was clipping. So I knew that there was gonna be a heavily distorted signal when I got it back and edited it down. So the amount that I've been able to recover, the amount that I've been able to restore this audio by, I am really impressed. Now I said previously in my review of this product that it was well worth seeing this video to understand the 32-bit audio and to see what's so special about the Zoom F2 recorder. On its own, it's a fairly mediocre device. It works, it's fine, but there's nothing amazing about it. Its redeeming feature is that it records 32-bit audio, making the recordings on this device bomb-proof and giving you complete peace of mind. The times I will be using this device will be when I'm watching a camera but not able to pay attention to the audio, but I still need to make sure I capture 100% perfect audio to use later on. It makes this a set and forget type device. I can put it in my pocket, press record and forget about it. I don't need to worry about this and I can focus on everything else that I'm doing at that time. You might also remember on my previous video, I said that on the front there's a volume control and that's a headphones output volume control, not an audio input volume control. And there is no audio input volume control on this because we just don't need it. The audio coming in, however loud or quiet that audio is, we have enough detail, enough volume levels that we can restore that audio and fix it later on without any real problems. I am excited for the future of this technology. I would love to see this coming into more devices. I would love to see cameras starting to build this into internal recorders so that we can plug in a microphone and not need to worry about the audio. The one thing I can't stress enough though is the importance to understand the technology. This is true of everything, all types of technology. We always need to properly understand the technology. We need to understand here that there are multiple places that the audio can be clipped, but only one of those places that it can be recovered. Make sure if you are recording outside, you are using proper windshields and all that sort of stuff on your mic, because if the mic capsule is being clipped or being overloaded, no amount of restoration later can fix that. That audio is gone forever. As long as we understand these things and know what the limits are and what can be achieved, this is a really powerful tool for us. So that's it. That's my look at 32-bit audio. What is it? Why is it so important? Why does it make this device so special? 
hopefully that's been helpful for you. We have done a deep dive today and there were bits of science and things in there that maybe you didn't understand and if you've got any questions as always please throw them in the comments below I would love to help you with those. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch this video and I'll see you in the next one. Thanks guys. Bye.